what's so truly unusual about what you're describing, your process, mm -hmm. is that, you know, from go, it's hard. Yep. And I have to ask, was being 300 pounds, having essentially, I'm using the words you've described. No, do you, it. You've said it before. Mm -hmm. You had a tendency at one point in your life early on, tell lies, yep. try and get people's approval. Lie my ass off. Crazy haircuts, mm -hmm. attention seeking, and and yet all of that triggered something mm -hmm. that now is you know is extraordinary. Right. Do you think those hardships were necessary to flip the switch? I don't know if they were necessary, but it was something that made me feel I didn't feel good. It was easy. The brain that I was given as a child, it was easy to go home and think about what, how do I want to be a freak today? How do I want to show up to school today and be a freak? It didn't require me going home and opening a book up saying, it's going to take me all year to learn this fucking page. So instead of learning that page, I learned how to become a character. And maybe that character that I created, that 300 pound, insecure guy that used to fake fake it time make it type of guy you know let me uh become your friend let me lie to you until you like me type of guy when when you have any kind of any manhood womanhood a human being a soul a spirit any i had no i, had, I must have just this, this much pride because that's exactly what opened the door for me because every day you were a character every day you were a clown every day you open that Spanish book or that science book or English book and you like you looked at it, it was like it looked like a foreign language. And you're saying, where do I start? Where, where do I start? And obviously it was necessary. The more I talk about it, it was necessary because what happened is I became haunted by the mere fact that this is my existence. And you gotta live with that. Now, I lived with it for a lot of years. And so I sat back and said, okay, all right, I know what this takes. And when you sit back as fucked up as I was, and I had a laundry list, a, a, a table like this of what I have to do to become just a human being that can make ends meet, that can make a thousand dollars a month just to get there. It was like, oh my God, dude, like how did, I, I'm 16, 17, I can't read, I can't write. And I, oh my God, I'm so behind the power curve and my brain is about being depressed and my dad beat my mom's not home and kids are calling me nigger at school. And I'm like, oh my God, man, what the f do I do? And it wasn't like someone came around and said, hey man, you can do this. This is all me. So people know where does this cold man come from? I'm not trying to be cold. It's the reality of my life. It's the reality of a lot of people's lives. And so, yeah, it, it, that had to happen for me to be haunted, to be haunted, to pull out, to extract the guy at the end of the day. That haunting is something that's still there today because no matter how much you improve, no matter how much you change who you are, it's not permanent. You don't just wake up and say, oh my God, man, you're, you're David Goggins. You break records. You do this. You do that. People don't know how are you. How are you able to just be so hard? Can I never turn the fucking thing off? Because once it turns off, I go right back to the David Goggins that is, and that's the guy that I'm constantly fighting every day. The law of repression. People are rarely who they seem to be. Lurking beneath their polite, affable exterior is inevitably a dark shadow side consisting of the insecurities and the aggressive selfish impulses they repress and carefully conceal from public view this dark side leaks out in behavior that will baffle and harm you learn to recognize the signs of the shadow before they become toxic see people's overt traits toughness saintliness etc as covering up the opposite quality you must become aware of your own dark side in being conscious of it, you can control and channel the creative energies that lurk in your unconscious. By integrating the dark side into your personality, you will be a more complete human and will radiate an authenticity that will draw people to you.
keys to human nature. If we think about the people we know and see on a regular basis, we would have to agree that they're usually quite pleasant and agreeable. For the most part, they seem pleased to be in our company, are relatively upfront and confident, socially responsible, able to work with a team, take good care of themselves, and treat others well. But every now and then, with these friends, acquaintances and colleagues, we glimpse behavior that seems to contradict what we normally see. What we glimpse in these moments is the dark side of their character what the Swiss psychologist Carl Jung called the shadow. The shadow consists of all the qualities people try to deny about themselves and repress. This repression is so deep and effective that people are generally unaware of their shadow. It operates unconsciously. When we experience those moments when people reveal the dark side, we can see something come over their face. Their voice and body language is altered, almost as if another person is confronting us. The features of the upset child suddenly become invisible. We feel their shadow as it stirs and emerges. The shadow lies buried deep within, but it becomes disturbed and active in moments of stress or when deep wounds and insecurities are triggered. It also tends to emerge more as people get older. When we are young, everything seems exciting to us, including the various social roles we must play. But later in life, we tire of the masks we have been wearing and the leakage is greater. Concealing this dark side requires energy. It can be draining to always present such a nice, confident front. And so the shadow wants to release some of the inner tension and come back to life. You must become adept at recognizing such moments of release in others and interpreting them, seeing the outlines of the shadow that now come forward. The following are some of the most notable signs of such release. Contradictory behavior. This is the most eloquent sign of all. It consists of actions that belie the carefully constructed front that people present. For instance, a person who preaches morals is suddenly caught out in a very compromising situation. The strange contradictory behavior is a direct expression of the shadow, emotional outbursts. A person suddenly loses his or her habitual self-control and sharply expresses deep resentments or says something biting and hurtful. In the aftermath of such a release, they may blame it on stress. They may say they did not mean any of it when in fact the opposite is the case. The shadow has spoken. Take what they said at face value. Vehement denial. According to Freud, the only way that something unpleasant or uncomfortable in our unconscious can reach the conscious mind is through active denial. We express the very opposite of what is buried within. This could be a person fulminating against homosexuality when in fact he or she feels the opposite. You must reinterpret the denials as positive expressions of shadow desires. Accidental behavior. People might talk of quitting some addiction or not working so damned hard or staying away from a self-destructive relationship. They then fall into the behavior they spoke of, trying to avoid, blaming it on an uncontrollable illness or dependency. This salves their conscience for indulging their dark side. They simply can't help it. Ignore the justifications and see the shadow operating and releasing. Also remember that when people are drunk and behave differently, often it is not the alcohol that is speaking, but the shadow. Over-idealization. This can serve as one of the most potent covers for the shadow. Let us say we believe in some cause, such as the importance of transparency in our actions, particularly in politics. We see everything in black and white terms. Our cause is moral, modern and progressive. The other side, including doubters, is evil and reactionary. By over-idealizing a cause, person or object people can give free rein to the shadow. That is their unconscious motivation. The bullying, the manipulations, the greed that comes out for the sake of the cause or product should be taken at face value. The overly strong conviction providing simple cover for repressed emotions to play themselves out. Relating to this, in arguments people will use their powerful convictions as a perfect way to disguise their desires to bully and intimidate. Projection. This is by far the most common way of dealing with our shadow because it offers almost daily release. We cannot admit to ourselves certain desires for sex, for money, for power, for superiority in some area. And so instead we project those desires onto others. 
For instance, we accuse another person in some conflict of having authoritarian desires. In fact, they are simply defending themselves. We are the ones who secretly wish to dominate, but if we see it in the other side first, we can vent our repressed desire in the form of a judgment and justify our own authoritarian response. Remember, behind any vehement hatred is often a secret and very unpalatable envy of the hated person or people. It is only through such hate that it can be released from the unconscious in some form. Consider yourself a detective when it comes to piecing together people's shadow. Through the various signs you pick up, you can fill in the outlines of their repressed desires and impulses. This will allow you to anticipate future leakage and odd shadow, like behavior. Rest assured such behavior never occurs just once, and it will tend to pop up in different areas. We can never alter human nature through enforced niceness. The pitchfork doesn't work, nor is the solution to seek release for our shadow in the group, which is volatile and dangerous. Instead, the answer is to see our shadow in action and become more self-aware. It is hard to project onto others our own secret impulses or to over idealize some cause once we are made aware of the mechanism operating within us. Through such self-knowledge, we can find a way to integrate the dark side into our consciousness productively and creatively. In doing so, we become more authentic and complete, exploiting to the maximum the energies we naturally possess. Deciphering the shadow, contradictory behavior. In the course of your life, you will come upon people who have very emphatic traits that set them apart and seem to be the source of their strength, unusual confidence, exceptional niceness and affability, great moral rectitude and a saintly aura, toughness and rugged masculinity, and intimidating intellect. If you look closely at them, you may notice a slight exaggeration to these traits as if they were performing or laying it on just a little too thick. As a student of human nature, you must understand the reality. The emphatic trait generally rests on top of the opposite trait, distracting and concealing it from public view. Your task is simple. Be extra wary around people who display such emphatic traits. It is very easy to get caught up in the appearance and first impression. Watch for the signs and emergence of the opposite over time. It is much easier to deal with such types once you understand them. The following are seven of the most common emphatic traits that you must learn to recognize and manage appropriately. The tough guy. He projects a rough masculinity that is intended to intimidate. Do not be fooled by appearances. Such men have learned to conceal an underlying softness, an emotional vulnerability from deep within that terrifies them. You must not let yourself be intimidated by the front, but also be careful to not stir up their deep insecurities by seeming to doubt their tall tales or masculine nature. They are notoriously touchy and thin, skinned, and you might detect a micropout on their face if you trigger their insecurities before they cover it up with a fierce scowl. If they happen to be a rival, they are easy to bait into an overreaction that reveals something less than tough. The Saint. These people are paragons of goodness and purity. This saintly exterior developed early on as a way to disguise their strong hunger for power and attention or their strong sensual appetite. And once they are in power, the shadow will have space to operate. There are genuine saints out there, but they do not feel the need to publicize their deeds or grab power. To distinguish between the real and the fake, ignore their words and the aura they project focusing on their deeds and the details of their life, how much they seem to enjoy power and attention, the astonishing degree of wealth they have accumulated, the number of mistresses, the level of self-absorption. Once you recognize this type, do not become a naive follower. Keep some distance. If they are enemies, simply shine a light on the clear signs of hypocrisy. The passive, aggressive charmer. These types are amazingly nice and accommodating when you first meet them, so much so that you tend to let them into your life rather quickly. Then something ugly occurs, a blow up, some act of sabotage or betrayal, so unlike that nice, charming person you first befriended. The truth is that these types realize early on in life that they have aggressive, envious tendencies that are hard to control. Over many years, they cultivate the opposite facade. Their niceness has an almost aggressive edge. Through this stratagem, they are able to gain social power. Uh, your best defense is to be wary of people who are too quick to charm and befriend, too nice and accommodating at first. Keep your distance and look for some early signs, such as passive, 
aggressive comments. If you notice that somewhat out of character, they indulge in malicious gossip about someone, you can be sure the shadow is speaking and that you will be the target of such gossip one day. The fanatic. You are impressed by their fervor in support of whatever cause. But at the key moment when they could possibly deliver what they have promised, they unexpectedly slip up. They become indecisive at the wrong moment or burn themselves out and fall ill or take such ill-conceived actions that it all falls apart. You will notice in their past some shifts in their belief system, sometimes radical. That is because it is not the particular belief that matters, but the intense conviction. And so they will shift this around to fit the times. Belief in something is like a drug for them, but the doubts return. They secretly know they cannot deliver the goods. And so under stress, they become the opposite, indecisive and secretly doubtful, never be taken in by the strength of people's convictions and their flair for drama. Always operate by the rule that the greater the stridency in what they say, the deeper the underlying insecurities and doubts. The rigid rationalist, all of us have irrational tendencies. We must simply accept this. But for some people, this makes them terribly uncomfortable. They experience primitive thinking as softness, as mysticism, as contrary to science and technology. The repressed, however, always returns. Their faith in science and technology has a religious air to it. When it comes to an argument, they will impose their ideas with extra intellectual heft and even a touch of anger, which reveals the stirring of the primitive within and the hidden emotional need to bully. They are also prone to strange shifts in mood and emotional outbursts as the shadow stirs. Bait them into just such overreactions to prick their bubble of intellectual superiority. The snob. These types have a tremendous need to be different from others, to assert some form of superiority over the mass of mankind. They put a lot of emphasis on appearances. They are more alternative than others. Their tattoos are more unique. Of course, it later comes out that they were exaggerating or downright lying about their background. The truth is that banality is part of human existence. We all have mediocre sides to our character and skills. Snobs are especially sensitive about this, greatly insecure about their origins and possible mediocrity. Their way of dealing with this is to distract and deceive with appearances, as opposed to real originality in their work, surrounding themselves with the extraordinary and with special knowledge. In any case, those who are truly original and different do not need to make a great show of it. Be extra wary of those who go out of their way to make a show of their difference. The extreme entrepreneur. At first glance, these types seem to possess very positive qualities, especially for work. They maintain very high standards and pay exceptional attention to detail. But underneath the facade, the seeds of failure are taking root. This first appears is their inability to listen to others. In fact, they mistrust those who do not have their same high standards. With success, they are forced to take on more and more responsibility. If they were truly self-reliant, they would know the importance of delegating on a lower level to maintain control on the higher level. But something else is stirring within. The shadow. Soon the situation becomes chaotic. Others must come in and take over the business. Their health and finances are ruined and they become completely dependent on doctors or outside financiers. They go from complete control to total dependence on others. Often their outward show of self-reliance disguises a hidden desire to have others take care of them, to regress to the dependency of childhood. They can never admit to themselves or show any signs of such weakness. But unconsciously, they are drawn to creating enough chaos that they break down and are forced into some form of dependency. There are signs beforehand, recurring health issues, the sudden micro needs to be pampered by people in their daily lives. But the big sign comes as they lose control and fail to take steps to halt this. It is best to not get too entangled with such types later on in their careers, as they have a tendency to bring about much collateral damage the integrated human. In the course of our lives, we inevitably meet people who appear to be especially comfortable with themselves. They display certain traits that help give this impression. They are able to laugh at themselves. They can admit to certain shortcomings in their character, as well as to mistakes they have made. They have a playful, sometimes impish edge to them. 
as if they have retained more of the child within. They can play their role in life with a little bit of distance. At times they can be charmingly spontaneous. What such people signal to us is a greater authenticity. If most of us have lost a lot of our natural traits in becoming socialized adults, the authentic types have somehow managed to keep them alive and active. We are completely drawn to the authentic types and unconsciously repulsed by their opposite. The reason for this is simple. We all secretly mourn for the child part of our character we have lost. The wildness, the spontaneity, the intensity of experience, the open mind, our overall energy is diminished by the loss. Those who emit that air of authenticity signal to us another possibility, that of being an adult who has managed to integrate the child and the adult, the dark and the light, the unconscious and the conscious mind. We yearn to be around them. Perhaps some of their energy will rub off on us. Conscious of our shadow, we can control, channel and integrate it. Aware of what we have lost, we can reconnect to that part of ourselves that has sunk into the shadow. The following are four clear and practical steps for achieving this. See the shadow. The best way to begin is to look for indirect signs as indicated in the sections above. For instance, take note of any particular one-sided emphatic traits in yourself. Assume that the opposite trait lies buried deep within and from there try to see more signs of this trait in your behavior. Look at your own emotional outbursts and moments of extreme touchiness. Your sensitivity to a remark or imputation indicates a shadow quality that is stirring in the form of a deep insecurity. Bring it into the light. Look deeply at your tendencies to project emotions and bad qualities onto people you know or even entire groups. Look at moments in your youth, late teens, early twenties, in which you acted in a rather insensitive or even cruel manner. When you were younger, you had less control of the shadow and it came out more naturally, not with the repressed force of later years. Take this process deeper by re-examining the earlier version of yourself. Look at traits in childhood that were drummed out of you by your parents and peers, certain weaknesses or vulnerabilities or forms of behavior, traits you were made to feel ashamed of. Look at emotions you were once prone to, things that sparked a sense of awe or excitement that has gone missing. You have become more like others as you have gotten older and you must rediscover the lost authentic parts of yourself. Finally, look at your dreams as the most direct and clear view of your shadow. The shadow is talking to you in various ways. Don't look for symbols or hidden meanings. Pay attention instead to the emotional tone and overall feelings that they inspire, holding on to them throughout the day. Get in the habit of writing your dreams down and paying deep attention to their feeling tone. Embrace the shadow. Your natural reaction in uncovering and facing up to your dark side is to feel uncomfortable and maintain only a surface awareness of it. Your goal here must be the opposite. Not only a complete acceptance of the shadow, but the desire to integrate it into your present personality. Explore the shadow. Consider the shadows having depths that contain great creative energy. You want to explore these depths which include more primitive forms of thinking and the darkest impulses that come out of our animal nature. The conscious thinking we depend on is quite limited. But the unconscious contains an almost limitless amount of material from memories, experiences and information absorbed in study after prolonged research or work on a problem when we relax our minds in dreams or while we are performing unrelated banal activities. The unconscious begins to go to work and associate all sorts of random ideas, some of the more interesting ones bubbling to the surface. We all have dreams, intuitions and free associations of ideas, but we often refuse to pay attention to them or take them seriously. Instead, you want to develop the habit of using this form of thought more often by having unstructured time in which you can play with ideas, widen the options you consider, and pay serious attention to what comes to you in less conscious states of mind. In a similar vein, you want to explore from within your own darkest impulses, even those that might seem criminal, and find a way to express them in your work or externalize them in some fashion. In a journal, for instance, show the shadow. Most of the time we secretly suffer from the endless social codes we have to adhere to. In following this path we gain comfort by fitting in, but we also become defensive and secretly resentful. 
At the same time, our shadow will show itself, but unconsciously, in explosive fits and starts, and often to our detriment. It would be wise to look at those who are successful in their field. Inevitably, we will see that most of them are much less bound by these codes. They are generally more assertive and overtly ambitious. They flout the conventions openly and proudly, and they are not punished but greatly rewarded. You pay a greater price for being so nice and deferential than for consciously showing your shadow. First, to follow the latter path, you must begin by respecting your own opinions more and those of others less, particularly when it comes to your areas of expertise, to the field you have immersed yourself in. Second, get in the habit in your daily life of asserting yourself more and compromising less. Do this under control and at opportune moments. Third, start caring less what people think of you. Fourth, realize that at times you must offend and even hurt people who block your path, who have ugly values, who unjustly criticize you. Use such moments of clear injustice to bring out your shadow and show it proudly. Fifth, feel free to play the impudent, willful child who mocks the stupidity and hypocrisy of others. Finally, flout the very conventions that others follow so scrupulously. In general, consider this a form of exorcism. Once you show these desires and impulses, they no longer lie hidden in corners of your personality, twisting and operating in secret ways. You have released your demons and enhanced your presence as an authentic human. In this way, the shadow becomes your ally. Unfortunately, there is no doubt about the fact that man is, as a whole, less good than he imagines himself or wants to be. Everyone carries a shadow, and the less it is embodied in the individual's conscious life, the blacker and denser it is.